Hello, welcome to this web broadcast to Plant 3D from D3 Technologies. Uh, my name is Pat Alonzo, um, as you saw on the welcoming screen there. Uh, I'm the Plant 3D expert for D3 Technologies. Um, and today I'm going to be walking you guys through um, kind of our workflow. Uh, we just got about 20 minutes here before lunch. Um, so we'll look at the workflow that Plant 3D uses. <coughs> Plant 3D is an industrial piping program that added on to AutoCAD for Autodesk uses. Um, and we'll kind of start in the 2D world with the PNID. Uh, we'll move over to 3D using that data, um, make a quick little 3D model there, and then look at some of our output options, um, which include a orthographic drawing and an isometric drawing. So without further ado, um, as you can see here, um, I have um, AutoCAD Plant 3D open here. Um, the big thing in Plant 3D is project manager based. Uh, if anybody out there's used in AutoCAD, that's project manager based. But um, I think it makes things a little better. As you can see, all of my drawings are available to me over here, um, both the source files as well as the output files here. I also have specific tool palettes uh, that are going to be used um, for the PNID and Plant 3D world here. <coughs> so um, a lot that I can do here with the PNID, I can just quickly come over, figure out you know what equipment I want to throw onto a PNID. Get a tag prompt right after that, and I can automatically place an annotation out there. We have many different types that are in here. These are all block-based assets. Um, they're blocked with a class definition. So if you have some existing PNID symbols that you use, uh, we surely can uh, get those added into the project pretty easily um, and available for you to use out here. Oops. Oh. -ho. Okay. Throw one more thing in here. We'll route some pipe. So then routing pipe is just like routing an orthographic line in AutoCAD, really. Um, we're going to start out with a regular old nearest snap off of this little guy. And you can see everything stays orthographic there. Stay on 90s. Uh, so we come down over to this pump. You can see that that line, I was a little over. That line was able to correct itself and went in there perfectly orthographic. Also, if I need to jog this a little bit, I can pull this line right up. It automatically will put a jog in this, in this line here so that uh, you know, I'm not coming into the nozzle sideways or anything like that. Um, automatically put flow arrows inside of the line. Um, purely annotative here, and you do have the option to delete them without really messing up the line. Um, you also have the option um, to have lines that don't have flow arrows. Once we put a line in, we'll give that line a tag. Um, based on its physical properties here, um, size, you can see spec here, service, and then a number. <clears throat> and all the tags that are out there that I'm filling out, you know, um, this is out of the box, so it's size, spec, service number. Um, that can be customized with any set of properties or any um, organization that you want, any custom properties that you want, fully customizable there, um, as well as the tags on, on the equipment and, and you know, nozzle tags, all that kind of fun stuff. So. Um, next, after the line in there, I'll throw a valve here. You see my, my valve automatically get its line, line size from the line. Uh, it'll automatically be tagged um, in a standard order, starting with uh, 101 and going up. Again, totally customizable. Um, I can change the end connections of my valve. So if I want some flanges on the end, or um, if I want to make this a normally closed valve, I can just do that through the right-click menu. And if I throw a 
we'll check valve over here. No check valve would never really go there in real life, but um, and you can see with certain valves they are flow dependent. Um, so you can see that valve went in the right way there. Um, and now if I edit the line and uh, reverse the flow of it, you can see that the check valve reverses with it. There, which way you go? A little line in there. Um, <clears throat> a lot of different fittings inside of here too. Uh, just uh, you know, um, random fittings that you can throw into the line. We also have all our instrumentation. So, um, like a control valve here. You can see. Throw the control valve down. Throw its annotation and fill out its tag, kind of what exactly this instrumentation is uh, and what loop it's on in the whole scheme of things. So you got that guy there. Um, actuators are fully customizable as well as the body of the valve. You can also customize those before you even put it in. So you can see here, here are the, all the valve bodies that I have in my project. Here are all the actuators that I have in my project. So I can edit that guy around however I need to edit. And then you can see we have general instrumentation symbols um, as well as instrumentation lines um, so we can connect our, our, our instrumentation correctly to make sure we're conveying the right message there. Um, notice a lot of what I'm doing here, I deleted that control valve. I just used the regular old erase command in AutoCAD. Um, I'm using, you know, grip selects to move this line around. I'm placing these valves. I'm using just nearest or mid, mid snaps. Um, so it's real friendly with a lot of what you already know inside of AutoCAD. Um, and a lot of the old commands um, aren't going to mess you up if you use them like some products out there. So. So if we take this guy with what we got there, and this is kind of hard to show on one screen. Let me see how it pops up. Um, let's go to webinars in the way. Okay. So this guy here is the data manager, and um, what makes this, you know, smart PID, smart plant stuff happen is everything is held in a database behind the scenes. Um, so we can see underneath here, this is my current drawing. I also have the option to look at the whole project. And I also have some predefined reports I can create. And so if I look at the current drawing, because there is only one drawing in this particular project, um, and if I click here on equipment, for instance, you can see this is all my equipment, all the different properties that that equipment has with it. Um, if I hit this first column, it will find the piece of equipment and zoom to it in the uh, drawing. Even if it's on a drawing that's not open, it will open that drawing, zoom to that piece of equipment. I can fill out this information about each one of these um, right here, or I can fill it out um, in a spreadsheet and uh, import it back in, all kinds of stuff there. I can also quickly grab any of these annotations and pull them out onto my drawing. So if I you know, just quickly want to put the description of this guy maybe on the bottom, I can quickly grab that without having to do too much. So I just want to show you that that's both in the PNID and the uh, Plant 3D side of things. We're always keeping track of everything that's inside of our drawings. So um, that's why. All right, so I'm going to save the PNID. And let's jump over to Plant 3D. Now, Plant 3D is a piping program, um, but we do have the ability uh, to both do equipment and structural, uh, more commonly referred to as piper structure, um, piper steel. So we're not worried about we're not going to worry about the um, actual you know connections of the steel. Uh, we're just kind of doing a line model, and you know we can do a grid here, for instance, um, and then we're going to place, you know, different members. You can see we have a large library of members in here, and so we can decide, you know, what member it's going to be there, and we can throw that member on the grid.
like so. And then from there, uh, we can we can miter the corners, or you know we can do like a cut back type of thing here, cut one back to the other. But that's about as far as the steel goes here. You also have the opportunity to edit all this. And you can kind of change where that center line is in conjunction to the steel, move this stuff around. So um, at the next level, it's going to give the structural designers a, a good idea of what you're thinking, what you've been piping around, and you're also going to make sure that your routes aren't going to run into anything else. Um, All right, we also can create some equipment here. Um, this is actually going to create um, some equipment using primitives, AutoCAD primitives. And so we actually have control over the size of each one of these equipment. So you can see I have a vertical vessel here with two sport torospheric heads and a cylinder in the middle. Um, and there's kind of the uh, dimensions of them over here. And I turn this down a little bit. 20 feet instead of 30, throw my tag in there. I want that tag to match what it was on the P&ID. So I can put that guy in, and then he's just going to be on my cursor somewhere. Um, so I can use my regular AutoCAD coordinate system to figure out where exactly this tank's supposed to be um, on X, Y, and Z. 30 X, 0, and then we'll give it a 0. The tank automatically comes in with, uh, with two nozzles here. Um, these nozzles are completely editable, so I can come to these guys, click on them, and not only can I change what they are, so you know, my line on the P and ID was a six inch, three hundred pounds. So we'll turn that flange up to three hundred pounds, six inch. We can also change where it is relative to um, the piece of equipment. So. You move that nozzle up or down or angle it differently, uh, lengthen the pipe a little bit, we can do that. Um, so on. So can also delete these too if we just need to get rid of them. If they're not there, just select them and delete key and they're gone. So go back here, make sure this guy is named correctly. We also have some pump models in there. Let's go look for some pumps here. Uh, we can see pumps down here. Do a turbine centrifugal pump. Uh, we'll make sure he gets a tag. You can see this is all parametric too. So you can change the sizes of your pumps. Make them, uh, you know, we're really worried about the nozzles, where the nozzles are, but you also want them to look kind of familiar to what you're going to be dealing with in your design. Place this guy out here. We'll see. Okay, so we placed two pieces of equipment in there. Uh, we had one more. We had an exchanger in there. And so we can see heat exchangers, a couple different types there. I don't remember exactly which one I put into the P&ID, but let's do this guy. And we'll call them exchanger 001. Create, and we'll just throw them over there. You can see four nozzles on the exchanger. Again, with our pump here, we got to make sure that our nozzle information is correct. Six inch flange, 300 pound, looks good there. And from there, we can start routing pipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the information from our P&IDs to route this pipe, make sure that the tags match and the physical properties match. So Plant3D has this little tool that looks back into the P&ID. So this little drop down is going to list all of my P&IDs that I have in the project. Like I said, I only have one in this project, so there's only one P&ID. Under that P&ID, it'll list all the line numbers it has in the project. So like you saw, I only had one in there, so one line. 
and then it's going to show me everything that's underneath there. So we have two nozzles, and we have a check valve and a gate valve. All right, so first thing I'll do is I'll place the line and come over that nozzle. You can see I come out of that nozzle, and it connects flange to flange there. It's going to put a bolt set and gasket in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my dynamic input on real quick, redo that show you guys because we really want dynamic input because you can see here now I got the option to type in my pipe lengths here I can also mess with angles so I can go either a 90 or a 45 or straight um, I can also flip that compass around and if I need to go up the z-axis I can go up the z-axis uh, and so we can kind of route this you know do our calculations figure out how far we need to be, and at a certain point we can actually come right over to this guy. And click on him, and Plant 3D will actually figure out a few routes that will get us to that pump. And you can see there's a few different options here that we can use. Um, probably looks like the best one there, so when I accept that, it throws the rest of the piping in there. And usually we kind of use that as a starter, and then we can we can take these pipes and we can kind of um, you know change our elevation here. You can see these are different elevations at top of pipe, center pipe, bottom of pipe. Uh, we can also show the displacement of them, and so as long as we have you know that piece of pipe to drag, like we do here with the verticals, we're able to move this pipe with no problem. So I can take this, come down a little bit. that. So you can see if I hold over there, it's going to tell me that this line is tagged as line number 001. It's a six inch line. Um, and it's spec CS300. Um, as well, the settings I have right now puts it on a layer that's named after the line, um, line number two. So From there, I can come in here and say, okay, we got our check valve. Let's place our check valve in there. When placing a check valve, you can see at this point, it's measured from the front of the valve, and it's given me measurements to the end of the flange and then the center line of that vertical line. Um, I can change around the base point that I'm coming in at. There's the front of it. There's the center of it. I can also change around what it's measuring to. Uh, let's say we're 30 feet here. That. Put in a... Uh, orientation and you can see right in line we get flanges on both sides of it we get a gasket in there there's the gasket and the bolt set so we don't actually see a hex head bolts around here but that but the uh, bolt set is in here and it's going to keep track of it on the bill material and all that and that's what that red line is there that's a bolt set so and, you know, if they're like uh, stud bolts, then it would set up and only have bolt sets on one side. So they're coming all the way through um, the piece. And, you know, whatever type of bolt set it is, they're all in there. So. And finally, the gate valve. Place that guy. And I'll just turn on the line here. And you can see this guy's got an operator. Let's specify where we want our operator to be. Make some pipe fitters mad there. Um, and so, yeah, that'll check that. Now, we do have a little tool that will actually look at the 3D model of PNID. Um, and you can see the following items here um, that it's going to make sure are the same. So, these are things like, you know, um, that gate valve was HA101, that was its tag. And so it's going to make sure that gate valve of HA101 is actually a 6-inch valve and that that 6-inch valve is on line number 001. Um, it's also going to make sure that line 001 connects to tank 001 um, on nozzle 1. So it, it's making sure that everything that's in your P&ID is the same as in plant 3D. And so you can see we can turn on and off these different uh, the different rules here. Um, so if there is one that maybe doesn't abide to you guys um, personally, then you can turn that off so it doesn't keep popping up. 
and, and this validation will run and it'll check between all the plant models and all the PNID drawings. And so if valves are missing or valves are in the wrong spot or lines are the wrong size, uh, we can catch that stuff at the design stage instead of waiting until we're out in the field. Right. Um, we do have some pipe supports over here. See many different pipe supports in here. So, um, we kind of oops. Let's go to meeting things my way. Scroll down here. Get the one maybe. Uh, Yeah, another pipe slide. And so this guy, as soon as he jumps on the line, not only are we going to get measurements from different areas, uh, we're also going to get, um, it's also going to know that it's on a six inch line, so the six inch port's going to be available to us. Um, so we can throw that guy in there, and that guy will actually show up on the isometric later on. Um, throw a couple of those in there. So. Okay, so once our uh, our piping's complete here, um, to go to the kind of output side of things, we're going to mainly be working off the 3D model for those. And the first thing that we usually get is an orthographic view. So if I create an ortho view here, we'll just make a top plan view here. It's going to come out to model space here, and it's going to show me everything that's in my model space. And you're going to see this crazy little green cube around everything. So we're going to tell on the top view, so you see the red view is, our, is, is what we're going to be perpendicular to. Um, we can move this cube around, so maybe, you know, I don't want to worry about the exchanger at this point. It's not piped to. We don't want it in our drawing, so I can move the cube over that way. Make sure vertically that my entire uh, tank's in there. And it looks like a good little view there. Um, so as far as scaling at this point, if we get a good look. It'll bring actually our, uh, our title block that's in paper space up. And this will kind of tell us where we are as far as scaling is concerned. And so we can go up or down here, kind of figure out you know, what's the best view for us in the size title block. That looks good to me. You also have hidden line options, so if you want to see hidden lines or not, match lines and pipe cut symbols up there. And if you don't want a perfect cube, you can add little jobs to the cube, um, make it pretty much any shape. So we'll place this guy and bring him up here. And once you place right there, um, you can see there's a little bit of color matching here, so like the gray that my tanks, my equipment was, switched to like a green color because you can imagine that light gray is really hard to see on the white background here, so I switch that around. Um, everything, with wireframe here, and we have a center line going through the whole thing. Now I can quickly come here and say I want an adjacent view to this, and let's say I want the uh, front view right underneath it. So I can pop that front view in there <coughs> using the same model so I can get a look at, at that from the side. You know, and, uh, at this point, you know, I can come here and I can use the dimension tool, dimension out you know, my pipe lengths, where my equipment is from different things. So <coughs> give me a good idea where I'm at. I can also do some annotations here. So like... If I want to look at the full line number call out here, and I want a leader on it, so I can put that information on there. Maybe let's do this guy too. Full line number call out, and we want to rotate this one. Oops, that one's already rotated, right? Oops. Okay. There we go. Enable leader. And there we go. If I go to a valve, it's going to ask me some different stuff for the valve and so so on and so forth. Um, 
We also have a bill of material in the ortho, so I can click on the viewport that I want to use to make the bill of material out of. And it's just going to ask me basically how wide do you want your bill of material. And then it'll place everything that's in there. So there's my pipe, my seamless pipe, my elbows, my flanges, bolt sets, gaskets, the two valves, and the three pipe supports that are in there. We also have fixed length pipes. So if you have like, um, instead of quantifying the full distance here, it'll quantify the number. And inside the description, it'll say it's a cut to 10 foot or something like that. So. Um, with that, there's some annotations too. So um, if I want to annotate the numbers from the bill material, so placing those guys on there. So there's all my pipe. Now this is that vertical pipe, probably better to change to the front view to show that number. So I can come here and change what view I'm looking at. Put that in there. And you can see then we switch to the elbows. So it'll just kind of keep going throughout the whole table. And those are all block based too. So if you need to change the size of those or you know the number or whatever, um, they're editable in there. So also we have a uh, fully integrated uh, title block here that has fields in it. And so that stuff up. Last little thing here I want to do before we're done: uh, run a quick ISO. We run these ISOs um, by the line number here, so 001. And we'll go ahead real quick and just make it on one sheet. And we'll let this guy run here. Um, the ISOs, um, something like this, usually takes maybe about 10 to 15 seconds to create. Um, you can see it's publishing kind of in the background. Um, so. If you do have a longer line, sometimes it'll take a couple minutes. So it's something you can just kind of start up. Um, and once it's done, it's actually going to give you a little message in the bottom right saying um, that the ISO is complete. It's ready for you to view. There it is. ISO creation complete. Click on that guy and open the actual drawing up. And you can see the ISO here. So there's a lot of information on this ISO. You can see there's a bill of material, a cut piece list, as well as a weld list. So you can see a lot of item numbers out here. Um, everything's really getting uh, getting dimensioned to. So there's a lot of cleanup that can be done here if you're looking at this thinking it's kind of busy. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you've ever done one by hand, you know how much better this is. There's our pipe supports here. There's our valves in there, how the operator is going to be stationed, as well as the valve tag, and what it's connected to. So you see we're connected to tank 01 at nozzle 1, 300 pound. And there's my check valve. We're going to show flange to flange length here. It's a little tick to show for a gasket gap. Uh, we're categorizing the bill of material. So pipes, fittings, flanges, fasteners, valves, pipe supports, all categorized in there. Um, and we got our cut piece and what each end of the cut pieces are going to be for us. So. <clears throat> as well as well, so we can we can set this guy up to have a little you know sign off column in them so the uh, the foreman there can uh, sign off on the welds. So. And that's pretty much it. Sorry guys, twelve o'clock kind of snuck up on me there. Um, hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, right in the uh, questions at the end, uh, if you have any questions or comments or want to get in touch with somebody from D3, thanks for coming and have a good day.